it's a real sort of like conundrum that I face every single time that I go to the airport, which is, okay, I, I don't want to wear a belt because belts have metal. You have to take them off. And if you take off your belt, your pants fall down. So I've got like one pair of jeans, which don't completely uh, give me gangster sag when I don't wear a belt with them. I've got one pair of jeans that stays up by themselves. And uh, that one pair of jeans happens to have zippers on the back of the pocket. And uh, last time I flew, a few days ago, I was, uh, I was like, okay, I'm going to go with these jeans because I don't need the belt to keep them up. And the zipper hasn't set anything off recently. And um, the guy stopped me. He was like, hey, do you have anything in your pocket? I was like, no, I don't. It's probably the zippers on my pocket. He's like, well, um, I'm going to have to, uh, to to pat you down. I will run my hands across your buttocks or, or something like that. I was like, do, do what you got to do. He was like, I'll use the back of my hands, though. And I was like, <laughs> like, like this makes a freaking difference whatsoever. Like, it, it was just the weirdest thing. I was like, how does this policy come up? Like, at what point do they say, okay, you're going to pat down someone, you're going to touch their butt, but you got to use the back of your hands because that is less invasive and, and more humanitarian. I don't know. Maybe it was just because I, I would hazard a guess that the rule that says TSA folks have to pat you down with the backs of their hands when they touch your butt, I, I would imagine that comes from, uh, <laughs> from a few too many TSA agents being a little too uh, grabby McSqueezes a lot during the whole process. A and that is probably why the rule exists that no, no, must use the backs of your hands. I don't care. Still a naturally untenable position for me. A total stranger patting my butt looking for contraband. But whatever. <laughs> it doesn't make it any less humiliating. And it doesn't make it any less of an invasion of my personal space to use the backs of your hand. It's a weird one. So I don't know. Maybe we'll get some new rules now the head of the TSA is retiring. I think employees bought him a bottle of wine, which he then had to pour out because it was over 3.4 ounces. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it got awkward when guests at his party couldn't cut the cake because he confiscated the knife, but go on. What else, Funkhauser? Researchers developed spreadable beer. Saw that. Yep, spreadable beer. I don't know what you'd be spreading it on. Toast, maybe a cracker or something like that. It sounds disgusting. That's I, I can't imagine. Like, it tastes like beer, but uh, uh, okay. Yeah, that sounds revolting. But, you know. I guess it is kind of an interesting development. It's clever that you can put alcohol in a spread. I don't know. Yeah. Mm. Researchers have developed spreadable beer. So, you know, remember, just because they haven't come up with an Ebola vaccine does not mean science isn't working on something very important. This one's a little too hopsy. Let's go back to drawing board. Uh, do, you, do you think the researchers are German? We don't have any more information. Do you think it's just safe to assume? Mm. Uh, I'm going to go out and all him and guess they're German. Like, we have the greatest scientific minds in the world, but people get antsy when we build weapons, so let's see if we can make some booze that spread. Yes, PBR flavor. <laughs> I like in this, uh, I like in this fantasy in your mind, um, that, uh, <laughs> that German scientists wanted to recreate... <laughs> Paps Blue Ribbon has a spread, you know, not, not, you know, Budvar or Heineken or, or something cheap and German. economical. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We take cheap American beer and we make it into something you can put on a sandwich. All right, go on. The founder of Chipotle said that competition from fast food is a joke. Yeah. I think then he added that uh, when he really, really feels like a laugh, though, he just looks at how much he charges for a side of guacamole. <laughs> mm -hmm. The Chipotle salad. I mean, I know guac is extra, and I'm always like, I, bitch, I know guac is extra. I've decided to treat myself. I work hard. And I've decided that the extra guacamole is something that I'm going to allow myself to splurge on today. Don't, don't you know, run down the cost of extra guacamole. Everybody knows it's outrageously expensive. But the base cost of, like, your bowl or your taco or your burrito or whatever the hell it is you're eating, at, like, the add-ons are, are crazy. And the price of your burrito when you get done putting all the stuff you want on it is so very different from what's on the board behind you. It's kind of like the Spirit Airlines of food. I flew Spirit Airlines a little while ago, and, like, 
I don't know if you've ever flown them before, but they're kind of like this cheap airline where tickets are genuinely inexpensive a lot of the time. But they charge you for carry-ons. They charge you for bags. And it was funny. I, I was well. It was it was a little sad, is what it was. I was uh, checking in next to some girl that clearly didn't read the fine print, and she had a lot of baggage. And um, they're like, "Okay, that'll be uh, uh, two hundred and forty-three dollars or something like that." And she was like, "Ah." That's as much as the flight. And I'm like, oh, yeah, should have read the fine print. I felt so bad for her. Anyways, not bad enough that it's going to occupy any more time on the show. But nevertheless, I felt a little sorry for her. So two ordained ministers, they filed a federal lawsuit. They're seeking a restraining order to prevent local officials from forcing them to carry out same-sex marriages. Apparently, they've been threatened with fines. They've been threatened with jail time over their refusal to have people get gay married in their place. <laughs> oh. The whole thing of them being principled and sticking to their religious guns falls down a tad when you find out that uh, the name of the, uh, the, the, the wedding chapel that they run is called the Hitching Post. But whatever, that's neither here nor there. Donald and Evelyn Knapp, owners of the Hitching Post Wedding Chapel in Idaho. They're being represented by the Alliance Defending Freedom, conservative legal firm, claiming that city officials told them they're required to conduct gay marriages under a non-discrimination ordinance. Should this be, should it be allowable that it's enforced or is it a personal choice thing? Does it have to do with religious freedom or does it have to do with being an unmitigated bigot? Heart Radio goes one on one with Jimmy Page to discuss why the acoustic guitar really was the foundation behind many of Led Zeppelin's albums. It was it was guitar driven. It was guitar driven. I think that's quite apparent throughout all of this. You know, the, the, when, when we're revisiting and listening to this stuff, and uh, quite surprising for a lot of people, it was also uh, the first. Well, four albums were written on acoustic. Um, you can hear the acoustic with Babe, I'm Gonna Leave You. I mean, that's very radical compared to what anybody else was doing around that sort of time. But it's acoustic. And there's acoustic on the Ramble On, etc. You know, on the second album. Uh, third album, it's the same guitar that I'm writing it on. It gets really played a lot on the, on, on the third album. And it's the same guitar that plays Stairway. So you can see the acoustic guitar was quite the bed underneath this, although it's still six strings and the, the, my various approaches to the electric guitar was still shown within the writing process and, and what was presented to the band and okay, let's this is what we're doing, you know. Keep listening to iHeartRadio for more Jimmy Page and all your favorite artists iHeartRadio goes one-on-one -on -one with Jesse from Congos as they compare living in South Africa to living in Phoenix. We've been living in Phoenix for 17 years, so we've lived there actually longer than anywhere else we live. But we spent eight very important years in South Africa, I think. Just we made our very best friends there. Just, there's a vibrancy to the country. You can go from a safari, an hour's drive, seeing lions and elephants and everything, to a metropolitan city and then go to the beach. It's really an amazing country. Uh, and then Phoenix, you know, it's a great place to grow up. We've put our band together in Phoenix, so it definitely has a place in our history and our heart, but it's other special. Keep listening to iHeartRadio for more from your favorite artists. Delivering fascinating subjects, interesting talk, and boobs and fart jokes. AD on iHeartRadio. Ordained ministers being forced or threatened with legal action if they do not carry out same-sex marriages. This is Donald and Evelyn Knapp who own... Uh, Hitching Post Wedding Chapel. And like we were saying earlier, the whole standing on a matter of principle about religious freedom and things of that nature. Uh, yeah. 
it's a little harder to take that seriously when your place of worship, your 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 church, your your sacred ground, that hallowed floor that you walk every day because of your belief and conviction is called the hitching post. Anyways, it's in Idaho. They're being represented by the Alliance Defending Freedom. They're a conservative legal firm claiming that city officials told them they're required to conduct gay marriages under a non-discrimination ordinance. If they refuse to marry gay people in their chapel at the Hitchin Post, they could face months in jail, thousands of dollars in fines. They could face up to 180 days in the clink if they refuse to let people get gay married. And I think that's for each instance of refusing to let people get gay married. Each day they decline to perform a requested same-sex wedding ceremony, they commit a separate and distinct misdemeanor subject to the same penalties. So what this means is if the Naps decide to decline a same-sex wedding ceremony for just one week, they risk going to jail for over three years and being fined $7,000. This all sort of uh, popped off last Friday. A man called the chapel two days after gay marriage was legalized in Idaho to inquire about a same-sex ceremony. The couple declined to perform the wedding, essentially placing them in violation of the ordinance, and they subsequently filed the lawsuit. You might be wondering why ordained ministers are being forced to marry gay couples. Consider this. The uh, the Hitching Post Wedding Chapel, opened back in 89, is a for-profit business, which means it's not exempt from local non-discrimination regulations. Yeah. Here's the thing. If you are a person that has a problem with the concept of gay marriage, it's very simple. There's an easy way. There's an easy way, if you have a problem with the concept of gay marriage, to live without it ever bothering you. There's an easy way to prevent gay marriage from affecting your life. And that is, don't marry a gay person. It's nothing to do with you. It really isn't. And the idea that one person or one set of people on this earth should be precluded from experiencing every form of love that others can experience is the, 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 uh, the idea is shocking and horrendous to me. And like I've said on the show many times before, I am a firm believer in gay marriage. Not only do I find it to be today's civil rights issue, not only do I find it to be like, uh, oh my God, how is this even a question anymore? What the, it's 2014. Why is it okay? Not only do I have all the uh, sort of appropriate moral high ground that would suggest gay people should absolutely get married, and how is this even a question? I am all for gay marriage because, you know what? Gay marriage will mean gay divorce, and gay divorce will mean gay divorce court on television, and I will watch the hell out of gay divorce court on television. But in this particular instance, in this particular instance, I uh, I have to believe that a for-profit business that would make money off of uh, something like this same as that that bakery that refused to make a gay wedding cake <laughs> same as that business that refused to make a gay wedding cake i want to i i want to have contempt for these people i want to i want to go on the air and attempt to humiliate these people that would deny folks their happiness but i can't i i can't do that for one very important reason if you're enough of an idiot to believe that by making a cake or by letting people get married in your for-profit business wedding chapel, the Hitchin Post, if you're dumb enough to believe that that is actually going to hold any repercussions for you in the afterlife, if you think that by baking a cake or doing something like this, you're offering your tacit approval to something that God wouldn't approve of, and you're going to blow it with a big man, and you're going straight to H-E double hockey sticks because of it, if you live your life in that kind of idiocy and in that kind of fear, and if that's the subtext that's going through the back of your mind on a daily basis as you attempt to make your way in this world... 
if that's the kind of paranoia your incredibly tiny brain is infected with, then I just can't find it in my heart to be mad at you for being a bigot in this way. Because I. 